Hi everyone, this is Paige and Julia, and we're doing another Ashtanga talk today. Um, this is more of a discussion though, versus a q and A, I I think, right? Yeah, more of like thoughts and things going on in our current, well in my current practice always, it's always about me, right? <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to Paige a little bit about like what experience in Ashtanga, like the more experience you have, the longer you've been in the practice, brings when you're teaching someone versus like someone who has less experience and has things to offer, but maybe it's different <clears throat> things? Um, yeah, why don't you tell me about your experience? Because so I've had a lot of teachers. <laughs> I like to shop around. You give me your opinion, and then I'll give you mine. <laughs> um, I feel like, I and I, I hate to say this, because I've taken so much from everyone I've worked with and like totally different things. I just feel like my experience working with you, having been someone who's been in this for over 14 years, and you know you're on like a very far series is that you don't not that they compete with me but like you don't have the same goals as me on any like close planet like you're not like I hope I get my jump through or like I hope I can like get my back bend like deeper or whatever you're working on for Paige like will I be able to spin my body around while I'm on my hands which is something <laughs> I'll probably never get to so it's like a really different experience never say never mm. um, it's a really different experience I think learning from someone where they have already been through that ages ago and they can look at it from like a very where things are going in a different way than someone who's like even if you think you know where it's going you don't really know until you've been there and like you're you know more than two-thirds done with like the full ashtanga thing so to speak you know what i mean and like i think you can look back on it more than like someone who hasn't been through it because like i guess okay like for me i'm gonna babble now let me waffle on my um in certain poses, I have a lot of trouble because I'm tight. So I try to like cheat a lot, I think, because I'm lazy and that's my own stuff. But you'll be like, well, that's fine to cheat. But like when you get deeper, that's going to be a huge problem for you. Like you, you need to like foresee where you're going here. And I don't hear that a lot from people who haven't done as much as you in the practice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I am not, this is not to, uh, to be a judgment of any sort. This is a personal preference. Um, from what I understand, Guruji really likes people to practice 10 years first, and I agree with him. And the reason I say that is because you just, you haven't found yourself in the practice yet. You're going to go through too many ebbs and flows. And the problem is that people, teachers, whatever you haven't integrated will end up being projected. So if a teacher is working on something and they haven't quite integrated it, and by integrating me, created this hole that's light that they're clearly consciously aware of, right? If it's a disowned part of them or their practice, you know, it always ends up coming across in their teaching and they, they put it on their students. Like if they're a perfectionist, they'll put that on their student if they're not working on their own perfectionistic stuff. If they suck at back bends, you know, they might even derail their students from not working on back bends. If they um, are very mean and, and, and curt with their students, or with themselves, they'll be curt with their students. So whatever it is that they, that, that they have not integrated ends up becoming the student's problem. I witnessed this with teachers that I've had, and I've seen this with a lot of, and it, you don't have to be a new teacher to have this problem. You could be in the game a long time and still have un unintegrated aspects of yourself that you end up projecting, but it's going to be more common if you're a new teacher. The thing is, you know, you just don't know what you're going to get. The practice is, is designed to put a mirror in front of you and to really show you those unintegrated parts, okay? And, you know, if you're just barely skimming the surface of yourself, of your body, of your emotional, um, you know, charges, of your psychological issues, how much are you really an instrument to others? And, and I'm not saying you can't be, certain people are, but there tends to be a cap, there tends to be a limit. I was just gonna interrupt you and say that. I feel like people will take you to a certain point where they are almost, and then you begin to, I, I hate to use this word because I use it all the time, but I think you begin to feel stiff like within the practice because like that's where they stop. Mm -hmm. And there's no like room to just like relax because things get like very, I mean maybe this is just my experience too, like with my teachers, 
things can feel very rigid at that point. Like where they are, that's where like kind of like the wall is and you kind of are like, well, I feel like I want to do more. Or I feel like I'm ready for more. And they're just kind of like, no, like there's a wall. And I think that like, because you're so far further and you can look at it and you're just like, just do it, whatever. And if you, and then I found like you constantly are like, oh, the practice has said no to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Paige loves to give me things and then like, it just is not happening. <laughs> there's a, there's a wall here. <laughs> So I don't, I don't know. I just, I find that like the most relaxing part. Then. I, yeah, I don't like it when a teacher says no, because it's true. The practice will tell you no, if you're not so ready. Fast. <laughs> so fast. Like instantly. Your like body it, will that, just be like, oh, that's not happening. No you way. Know, you don't need a teacher to, to project that onto you. Um, and I'm not saying that you don't follow standards and protocol and you get one pose at a time and you, you follow the parampara and you, and you, you learn that system. That's not what I'm talking about, but you know. But I've seen it over and over again with people. So, like, some people uh, – I'm very young in Ashtanga, so, like, take what I say with a grain of salt. But, like, I think that what happens is different people have different capabilities within themselves. Some people are really strong. Some people are really flexible. Some people, like, can do things easier than others or whatever. Everyone has a hang-up. But when you internally feel like, I need more, it's easier to be given more and then realize no than to have people say no to you. It, like drawing a line for yourself is so much easier than somebody else drawing that line. Well, and I've always said this: you you can only give what you have and teach what you know. And if you haven't been there, you can't. I am a total snob. If you haven't been to a certain place in the practice, I don't want you picking mine apart. I'm sorry. If you don't do third or fourth series, then step off. And that, that that's a lot of ego and a lot of attitude. But the reality is, if you haven't been there, you don't know. Um, but don't you think there's a lot of like focus on so? I, I hear in the Ashtanga community a lot the word sloppy. I feel like it's the ugliest word when it comes to Ashtanga because, like, is anyone's practice really sloppy? Like, they're just doing it. And I, I think I hear that over and over again. It's like a thing that people hold themselves to, like, really high standards, whereas, like, but see, one thing it's not I, really about that. Yeah, no, it's not. And that's one thing I would like to move away from is this, like, this, this, this idealizing what it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to feel like, how it's supposed to be in the experience. You know, again, I think life is hard enough. We're trying to manage our jobs, our careers, our marriages, our children. And so when you end up going onto your mat, the one place where ideally you'd want to be able to kind of let that go and shed those layers, and now you have to conform to who, to what, you know? And, and, and the thing I would like to see more of is, and I instill this in my students, you know, if the practice isn't giving you joy, why are you doing it? If you're not healing, why are you doing it? You know, whose standards are you really trying to conform to, yours or someone else's? And, <laughs> you know. Sometimes someone else's, The practice <laughs> is such a, a great teacher. You know, my job as the teacher in the room, whoever's holding the space, you know, I call myself a supervisor a lot. It's like my job is really just to help you to move out of your own way so you can go where you want to go. My job is not to put, put, put chains on you, to handicap you, to you know, uh, tell you right from wrong, the practice will do that. You don't need me to harp on you. My job is to inspire you and to let you know that it is possible, you can heal, that injury can go away, you can get your leg behind your head one day, et cetera, et cetera. My job is to, is to keep holding that space for you um, so that you can grow into that place in, do you on think your mat and in your life. you that if they're, sorry to interrupt you, if they don't have like, well, I mean, it's funny because I do have some teachers who are able to do that, who are very new to the practice, but I just feel like as a person, they just cultivate like joy versus like people who... Everyone is different. I've just, I've just noticed that, again, one of the biggest things I didn't want to teach when I first got into the practice was because it's a big responsibility um, to manage someone's physical well-being, emotional well-being, and psychological well-being. And if you don't have the tools, uh, you're going to make a big mess. That's just been what I've seen. And um, people don't get what they need. And, and a lot of us are just kind of like pulling at the straws. We're trying to figure it out and do our best. So this, again, this, don't, there's no judgment. And this is just a kind of an observation I've made over the years. Um, if you can, seek out someone who really kind of instills in joy in your practice and helps move you and, and motivate you as opposed to blockade you because I think life has enough of that. But, um, you know, I just, I think it's important that, that, you practice first before you try and teach and um well and except i think that the problem i've seen with ashtanga is there's this like 
dogmatic approach to it. I mean, it's a very difficult physical practice that requires like a certain level of like type A personality, I think, to be like even interested in it. It's not like for the faint of heart, as they say. Like it's not like yoga stretching. And there's such an obstacle based practice that you really have to be someone who's like, oh, I want this. And I think that then what happens is with I, I've seen a lot like people they're so focused on like their own results or like where they think this is gonna go that they don't have like the space to look at like with teachers like they don't have the space to look back and be like oh I was so new to this and so naive like you said to me once like would you go <laughs> when you uh, maybe you and my husband have told me this like if you want to be the best at something would you go to someone who's just starting at it or would you go to someone who's like the best at it and you learn from them and you can take so much more from them because they have such a variety of experiences to draw from and to help you through whatever you're, you know. Well, all I know is. is that more experience will give you more tools. Right. Obviously. That's, right. Like, and more um, tools is helpful and when you're trying to figure out a jump back. Like, you know, like learning to put your head down was like super helpful a couple days ago. I'm glad you got that. But the other thing is. <laughs> but I never even thought I could do that. And so many people, they never really get to this point in the practice where ideally we're trying to move away from um, identifying a form, period, okay? What does that mean? That means that like, and it's, that's, a, that's such a horrible thought for some people because they can't go there from the mind, from the ego, right? But anything that you identify with, like I'm a great mother, I'm a great practitioner, I do fabulous back bends, if you're not careful, that will become your undoing, meaning that there will come a point where you're tested to where you're like, wait, maybe my back bends kind of suck. Oh, I injured myself now, I can't do them. Oh, I just got in a fight with my child. Maybe I'm not a great mother. Like something is going to happen to test that thought form, and all of a sudden, it's going to be your undoing. So, when we when we are able to to stay in a detached place and allow the practice to speak to us, you know, we're going to gain more. But again, that just that takes so many years to get to that point where you're not triggered by every little nuance. <laughs> I mean, don't like I feel like I have a different take on Ashtanga literally daily. I'm and like, I love beginners oh. for that. I can always tell a beginner because they are so attached to every little detail as it appears and disappears in their practice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I can't even tell you if my practice yesterday was good. What did I even do yesterday? Was it second? Was it fourth? I don't know because I'm not attached to it. Like well, I'm, I, I just, I'm so attached to my practice. I just show up and I kind of make an assessment of how my body feels and my energy is and we go from there and hopefully get through it, you know? But that's... That's, you know, No, when I have a bad trying... day, it's, like, bad. It's, like, I'm, like, emotionally distraught. But that's <laughs> because I don't know any different, I think. Well, and again, you're still, you're still forming a relationship to your body and to the practice. And, um, but anyway, I think the whole point of the, the, the discussion was just that, <clears throat> you know, at least from my perspective, is, you know, newer teachers, they, I think they mean well. I'm sure they mean well. Everyone means well. But, but they don't always have the tools and, you know, well, I think they can serve, like, a huge purpose, though. Like, I, I've taken – I mean, I was started with a newer-ish teacher. And I just – They got me somewhere. And then it was like, okay, it's time. I mean, I went over this in my last thing. Like, it's okay to be like, it's time to find someone who can take me further. Like, well, and I've always joked, like, I, you know, I work with beginners. I'll work with broken people. Not, not a problem, but I've always joked because there's so many – there's, there's a good handful of teachers here in Las Vegas that will get you through primary, and that's it. You right. know? And I'm like, okay, well, when you, after, <laughs> you want to move on and you can't then call me. But by all means, go to her. I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, she but will I set you up and give you a foundation. I have not, no problem with that. And if, if you want to progress from there or you get stuck and they can't help you, call me. Don't you think that they do, the one problem I've seen is that that foundation can sometimes be problematic when you look at, like, Oh, no, we, we have to unlearn everything. we had to, like, start again with me. And that was kind of hard for me. <laughs> yeah, we go. learn and we unlearn. We learn and we unlearn. Yay. Go team. Ashtangis. Because, <laughs> like, I think it's also, you. <laughs> when you practice with someone who can do so much with their body, like, I feel like the sky's the limit for you. It's really just a question of whether or not you're willing to or, like, in the mood more than anything. Like, not so much, like, a physical, like, I could never stand on my hands and then like lift up a hand. It wouldn't even be a thing. Yeah, but, but I think for you, it's like just, am I am I feeling motivated enough to do this at this moment? It's not so much a physical limitation, but that makes it seem like Ashtanga really is a tool to get you different things, not just- But again, the more you work through the attachments, the more you'll progress in your practice too. You know, the less you're, you're determined to get something, the more it comes. And that's just, that's just natural law. You know what I mean? If you chase it, it runs, whatever it is, so. Great. 
<laughs> if you <laughs> allow it, if you open your hands, open hand, that's my policy, keep an open hand, you know, things will come in when it's time. Open heart, open mind. Mm -hmm. Can't lose. Open Friday palm. night lights. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, I enjoy talking about Ashtanga. My oh, I love talking about Ashtanga. My students, they, 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 you know, I'm like, can we talk about boys? No, they won't talk about Ashtanga. No. <laughs> it's a, I think that the thing about Ashtanga that's really, like, it's such a strange, it's like a, it is more of a disciplined and a learned, like, process than a lot of other forms of yoga where you just, like, as you get stronger, you start doing things. Like, as you feel willy-nilly, like, oh, I feel strong enough, I'm going to try Firefly or Tidibasana, whatever I'm in the mood to do, and you keep working on that one pose because that's what you're fixated on, but Ashtanga isn't like that. It's like, you may feel like you want to do something, but it's nowhere near where you are in the practice, so you have to just sit with what you're stuck on for so long until someone's like, okay, you're this ready practice, to learn a new pose. This practice is so honest. It's great. It's really humbling, and that's like a, it's a special experience. But... Um, Pages, Facebook is blowing up. People. We should probably go. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna practice and then go to the lake. So you guys have a great day. Bye. Namaste.